hi welcome to my beautiful channel this is an office gown we'll be making with neckline facing and ample facing this is strictly for beginners and for anyone who is interested in knowing how to make the ample facing let's go right in okay for the first part of this this is the front i folded the fabric into two okay from the shoulder point i will mark my neck width which is three inches by three inches okay i will use my cuff to connect it and i'm going to mark my shoulder divide by two because this is an off shoulder dress i'm not going to be adding um seam allowance i'll just assume that my nose the seam allowance or if possible still my nose have an inch from the shoulder um, points okay so that the shoulder points does not get to the tip of the shoulders itself it should be hanging in between the shoulders so from there i'll come down by one inch and then i'm going to connect it from my neck point to the one inch shoulder drop down as you can see okay so from the shoulder points we're going to a shoulder line we're going to mark our bust line under bust in this case there's no need for under bust we're marking our waistline the under bust is not necessary and then we'll mark our hip line after the hip line we're going to mark our knee length right now at the hip line i'm going to mark hip divide by two plus one inch seam allowance at the waistline the same thing waist divide by by four did i say by two no, the measurements are divided by four okay and then the bust divide by four also plus one inch seam allowance remember i said divide by four not by two okay now this gun does not have a waist that it's only going to have an arm um bust that right now this is the bust line i'm trying to highlight this so that we'll see from there i'm going to go up by 1.5 inches to get my armhole line which is above the bust line by 1.5 inches at that point also i'm still going to measure my bust divided by four plus one inch and i will mark it and connect the two together okay now we're also going to go and measure our shoulder line the same thing we marked up so that we'll get a straight line like this after which we're going to connect the armhole divide it into two go in by half an inch and then connect the armhole line using your curve or using your free hand whichever one that works well for you before i said this is for beginners but now i think it's not just for beginners it's for everyone okay now for the bust that from the bust line i'm going to come down by 1.5 inch to mark my bust that and the bust that from this point i'm going to measure five inches and that is where i want the that to stop i don't want it to get to the midpoint of the bust line it just have to be by the side and i'm going to connect it this way so once i minus one inch for seam allowance it's going to remain four inches now like i said before we're marking also to the knee area and whatever i have at the hip line i'm going to minus one inch from it and mark to the knee area that will serve as the tightening of the knee and i'll connect them together please if the person is not curvy just make the line so straight okay so you don't have bulges by the side and then i'm going to mark the length of the sleeve of the gown rather and also bring down the measurements that i have there at the knee line i'm going to bring it down exactly the way it is 
I hope this is making sense to you. If it does, please subscribe. Consider subscribing to this channel, okay? And I promise you, you're not going to be disappointed. So the next thing is for us to cut and place on the back. Remember what we've just cut is the front. We're going to place it and cut the back. Okay, so I'm starting from the lower part. I'm starting from the lower part. Now remember we have both starts of 1.5 inches. So I'm going to make the front longer than one by 1.5 inches so that when I hold the side, it will meet up with the back. Now for the back opening, the slit, I'll mark it 7 inches from below. A way to use one inch for hemming so the opening is going to remain six inches okay so I'm marking out my zipper allowance now the lower part is quite wider because I'm going to be overlapping it okay so the front everything is just the same thing except the neckline which we're going to see very soon Okay, so the neckline depth is 1 inch. You can do 1.5 inch. Well, I did 1 inch. Okay. So, we're connecting the neckline to the ne front neckline. And at the shoulder tip, I'm going to come up by 0 0.25. That's because I don't want the front and back shoulder to be at the same point. It needs to shift forward. So I'm just going to cut everything the way it is together, together, together. Okay, this is the gown that we have. Now the main thing we're going to be seeing is to cut the facing for the front. So I've placed, I've folded my fabric into two and placed the back side of my garments and i will mark two inch two and a half inch or two inches from the neck point and three inches below from the depth of the neckline and that is how much um facing that i want for the for the front or for the back okay so this is how it's looking now I'm going to keep that aside and also cut for the front the same pattern, the same way. Okay, this is for the front facing or the neckline facing, right? The shoulder, we're marking two and a half inch. You can do two inches. Two and a half, one inch will be for, um, for weaving. So this is how it is cut. Even without the explanation, I know this video is so clear and you're getting value for what you're watching. So I'll put them together. Now the next thing is our armhole fitting, which is the most important thing here. So I need you to pay attention. I folded into two. I'm going to place the armhole by the side this way. Okay. Don't make it to be outside. Let it be equal. So I'm going to trace the armhole and the shoulder line is going to be 2 inches down to the armhole. Right? 2 inches because we don't want it to be too big. Normally it's not supposed to be too big. So we're just going to measure or cut out following the chalk markings. And this is what we have. Now, if the armhole facing and the neckline facing touches each other, there's nothing bad in it. Okay, so I'm going to be marking 2 inches from that line. Of course, 2 inches from the line is what we are marking. We are marking. And then, yeah, that is the 2 inches from where we marked the armhole. We connect 2 inches this way. Now, once this is done and you cut it out, you're just going to bring front and back faces together and join them. 
front and back facing together and join them. Remember, we're cutting two two. Okay, so we're going to separate it and cut for one of the front of the front and one of the back and put them together. I just have to be explaining this as it's going on. This is the drafting video. Okay, so this is the armhole facing and this is what we've got. I'm still going to cut the other side. Of course, no one is too young to do this. And no one is too old to do this. Okay, so you see how it fits so perfectly. So, so perfectly. Even though I hold the armhole um, bust that, it's still not going to affect it. Okay, it's not going to affect it. So what you have to do, if there's any problem there, just trim it properly. So this is what it is. We've cut the whole of the front together. Or if it's the back or cutter, we'll cut together. And of course, we're going to tear open this way. That will enable us to join front and back together for one armhole. Another front and back together for another armhole. Okay? So all we have to do is to join it and top stitch on it. This is showing you sample of what the armhole will look like after sewing. Okay. So whatever I do to one side, to the front side, I'm also going to do to the back. And this is what we've got. Like I said, just sew and top stitch and iron with hemming gum and that's all.